So, yeah, as I was saying just before I press record, uh, Kat is joining us on this conversation. Kat is my wife. She's lovely and beautiful <laughs> and talented and wonderful uh, and also really loves your band. If I if I walk into our main, if I walk into our living space during the day and Kat's listening to music, uh, I would say that it's it's normally always Kurt Vile, The National or Local Natives. I would say. Wow. Do you think that's fair? Yeah. Do you that's, think that's fair? Yeah, that's, that? that's fair. Yeah. yeah. We're in good yeah, company. I love that's that. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So that's love a relief. That. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I'm just going to, uh, you know, maybe make a sandwich and just uh, leave Kat to it. Um, Kat, do you want to sure. kick off? Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, I'm not a journalist. So, um... <laughs> Hopefully this will all go okay. Um, thank well, you to James for inviting you've, me on. You've, you've got that going for you for, for a start. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, as James says, I've been a fan for a really long time. Um, Gorilla Manor soundtracked so many kind of wistful stares out of airplane windows for me. Um, so <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've loved your band for a really long time. I love that. Um, awesome. Awesome. Super excited for the new record. How are you feeling now it's out? It felt How you um, feeling, well. I I'm feeling amazing, <laughs> <laughs> and partially because um, you know the story of this record is like pretty like we spent a really long time working on this record. Some songs have been out for a long time, and it sort of just felt not real um, to me at all that it was coming out until just about like 24 hours before it came out. And then all of a sudden, it felt real. And was out into the world and we were sharing it and it was you know took flight and we had like a party for that in la and all of a sudden i was just like oh yeah this record and um so yeah it's just catching catching us i think at a good time because it's it's felt really awesome uh just as of a few days ago it's felt great <laughs> <laughs> yeah and felt- we've been like playing the songs live kind of some of them for the first time just you know this week with some uh release surprise release shows and acoustic shows so it's just yeah it's kind of all like starting to kick off and it's feeling really good that's great how does this record feel live compared to previous stuff well we I don't think we know yet. So like our tour really starts um, mid August and where are we right now? It's like, so in a month Uh, and a new album tour, it always, it always takes that first tour to figure out what it is. And the songs like they do, they, they live and they morph a little bit live as we go. So I'm not sure. Um, We did play, you know, a bunch of them live for the first time. And what I can say about that is, What's fun about that is like, um, it actually makes me feel like some nerves for the show, like a little bit, like I don't know what I'm doing, (laughs) which is really fun because after, you know, um, even like Gorilla Manor, like I don't have to rehearse any of those songs, you know, even they're just like in my body. Um, but it's kind of fun to be like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like that feels pretty (laughs) good on stage. Yeah. And some songs take like longer to to find their footing live for whatever reason. Like we were kind of laughing, like, we, you know, one of our songs, Dark Days, like I remember when we first started playing it, it just kind of felt like, yeah, I don't know, for whatever reason, we didn't feel like it, it was necessarily like working live. And now it's kind of like a staple of our set. And so it's always interesting to find like what songs from the new record are going to kind of like raise their hand and, and connect in that way. So I guess we'll find out really soon. Um, I'm sure you mostly want to talk about the new record, but since you've brought up Dark Days, one of the questions yeah. I really wanted to ask you was how it came about that you worked with Nina Pearson on that, because mm. I just think her voice worked so amazingly with yours, but it's not its not someone I would have necessarily put together with you. So I just yeah. was really interested, were, were you fans before or did someone else suggest her? We were all big fans, obviously, had you know, grown up hearing the cardigans and stuff um and we had done some touring kind of like basically 2013 we had toured most insane tour we'd ever done basically like 11 months and uh spent like a fair amount of time like in scandinavia and stuff um and i don't know i think i just started listening to the cardigans again while we're on that tour and so um kind of came home and and was working on the song and 
And then when it came time to making it a duet, I think she was just like kind of like in my brain, like that voice, you know, and, and, and I think none of us had any connection to her. You know, we'd never met her and it was just I kind just, of a I more like, wouldn't it be her, crazy? Like, yeah, yeah. Just like fully cold, cold called her on an email. Yeah. Just like, Hey, what's up? <laughs> We're huge <laughs> fans. Um, check out this song. Want to, want to sing with it? It was just like a real, um, like blindfolded swing in the dark yeah. and she listened to the song and she, and she like loved it. And I just remember that moment with you, Rye. Like we used to live at this house together in Mount Washington where we lived over there. And I remember that, remember that phone call with her on the deck. Yeah. Uh, and we just like, couldn't believe it. Also that was like the week Ryan and I were flying to London to mix the mm -hmm. record that week. So the album was like very done. It was the last second. And she just totally got on board. We had that phone call out there. It was so, so amazing. And she recorded it from her home in, in Scandinavia and sent us the tracks like while we were in mix in London. I, would, I feel like we were trying to pretend like, oh yeah, there's plenty of time. Like, you know, <laughs> take your time. But it was like, we were like literally mixing the song being like, if you can send us your vocal like tomorrow, <laughs> that'd be cool. But yeah, was it, it was, it was, it was amazing. Was it always going to be a duet? Um, I think that was the first time we did it. Was, I was just thinking, yeah, it was the first time on that record. We had some cool, you know, other people sing uh, for the first time, which is something we'd never done. You know, Moses Sumney was on a song. Um, but yeah, that was the first time we'd made like a duet like that. And I think it was like, yeah, it, we wanted Nina to, to do it. It felt special. Yeah. So I, I think, I don't think it was always going to be a duet, you know, like I think, yeah that idea did emerge is like, man, this would be awesome. We thought it would be so cool to do that. And so that's why it was all like a little bit last minute. Um, but yeah, that, that just really felt like that song would be so amazing as a duet. What's funny is I was, I was going back through some of the emails um, on, on this song and uh, if it wasn't Nina, if she like said no, for some reason, our backup plan was this new singer named Dua Lipa. <laughs> and like, <laughs> <laughs> we had like reached out to, to her management. I think she, they were like, she's into it, but like, she's just put out one song. She's just doing this thing. So I, I don't think that was going to work either. <laughs> but yeah, what that was our backup plan. <laughs> yeah. Boy, is that, is that real? You're not taking the piss? I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm <laughs> no, Ryan had found just... Dua Lipa. I remember when you told me like, I love this new singer Dua Lipa and it Obviously, her rise was quick, so uh, somehow you found that that gap there, uh, and yeah, that was. <laughs> I remember. I had forgotten that right? That's so crazy. It's pretty crazy to think, like, yeah, because she. I, I. I don't know. I think it was that thing where if I thought I was like, this, this is like this small like indie artist or something, but I think <laughs> they were like crafting her her rise, uh, and they, they did, dark days wasn't a part of it, but apparently she liked the song, so that was cool. That's wild. Do yeah. You wanna, do you want? Do you want Kat to ask some more um, random questions about the past, or should we talk about the new record? <laughs> we can. We, I would we love to talk about, about the, past. the past with you, Kat. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, let's keep it going. Kat, do you want to explore the past a little bit more before we move on? Well, I've got a kind of bridging question actually, which is that how what, was it? What a pro! Thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> um, how did it feel celebrating the 10th anniversary of Hummingbird at the same time as building up to this record? Like, did it emphasize things that had changed in that time? Yeah, I mean, God, Hummingbird. Taylor was just saying, like, making this new record was kind of heavy, but Hummingbird was like the ultimate heavy experience. And uh, I don't know, it's it's so strange kind of like going back I think the other guys in the band are maybe a little bit more comfortable, like kind of like living in that time or like kind of like going back to some of those songs. But for me, it's just like, it's kind of almost like hard to like look back um, and revisit some of that. I think it's going to be fun to like do these shows that we're doing coming up where we're playing the album front to back. Cause we've never done anything like that before. But um, something about that record is like, we'll talk to fans after shows and, you know, maybe at the time it was like a mellower thing live or, or for whatever reason. Um, but it seems like it's connected on a deeper level with a lot of our fans. And so and so that feels like it's it's become a really special 
album um for us and yeah i don't know tay how are you feeling yeah i love i love making you talk about it first because ryan I like know. really struggles <laughs> to look back um yeah. especially especially with hummingbird i feel um which you know i love about you right you're always looking forward <laughs> um but yeah i'm i'm like yep. very very like super excited for this is my dog by the way guys oh, Hi. Who's this? um uh hold on let me let me deal with this dog i'm so sorry one sec <laughs> one sec Bubba, come here. yeah no, I, I'm I'm all about it. There was a dog on the episode two ago, so we're fans of dogs on this podcast. Okay, Cat will, yeah. Every Cat... time we go to Taylor's house, that, that dog is like, I'm like, you need to walk that dog more. I think because he's just insane. Like he's always like freaking out and jumping all over everyone. I mean, this might be a good uh, this might be a good tangent to say that Cat won't let us have a dog. I was hoping we'd get into some yeah. marital, um, just, you know, the yeah. ups, the downs, the 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 discussions. That's great. I mean, the real the, the real down is that we're not allowed a dog. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's and not exactly me. Are you? Do you not, not like mean. dogs? No, that's not fair. I love dogs. It's just where we, you live. It's where we live, but also we have two guinea pigs, and they wouldn't like dogs. Yeah, but uh, we we have guinea pigs. So James did not give you the full story. We have guinea pigs. We have guinea pigs because I was allowed a you. dog. Ah, uh, but see. now you're too attached to the guinea pigs. I mean, you can't trade them back, right? Oh no! I mean, I'm not suggesting you know throwing them in the bin or anything like that. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm commit I'm committed to guinea pigs. I'm just saying okay. yeah, there was there was a fork in the road and we went down the road of the guinea pigs. But the guinea pig road. Yeah, yeah. James, I, I like how you, you become a disembodied head every once in a while. Yeah, it's yeah. so great. Yeah, no, it's pretty yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. Right, Cat, well, I mean, um, y'all, Cat, if you get a dog, I suggest getting a smaller dog, especially with the guinea pigs. Uh, we got our dog, and he's just much larger than anticipated. <laughs> And uh, that's been a lot. Um, so that's just that's that's my only advice. Um, yeah, just try try a tiny dog, a guinea pig sized dog out. Um, maybe maybe that's the compromise. Would you say yeah. that if we didn't get a dog, cat isn't allowed to go watch local natives when you tour the UK? <laughs> I would not. I would not do that, James. That doesn't seem uh, that doesn't seem appropriate or fair doesn't at all. Seem fair. Um, <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. But, right. um, Kat, but I do think that you guys should just, you know, try one for a week. You know, Kat, have you done talking about the past? Can we talk about the future? Wait, no. Let me let me go back to Hummingbird for a sec. I'm so sorry. There's like a wild interruption. Um, yeah, I just want to say about it. So it's the 10 year anniversary, as you said, and and so we're about to play these 10 year anniversary shows. It's they're in like a week or two. Um, and it's going to be at this outdoor amphitheater kind of up in the hills and in, in Hollywood. It's a really beautiful space. And I'm just like so, so excited for, for these shows. And, and Ryan did touch on it, but I just think Hummingbird in particular, it got in so deep with a lot of fans. You know, it was about loss and there was like death. And so a lot of people who experienced something like that at that time, I think just sort of like bonded to the record in a really special way. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be like a really just beautiful time to get to celebrate that album, that experience and got to give, you know, um, Aaron Dessner a shout who made that record with us since he's one of your other favorite artists in the national. Um, and that was so special for us, like living at, Aaron's house in New York when we made that album and yeah it was just like a really special time for me with you guys knowing with you guys having a relationship with the National do you think the National would want me and Kat to have a dog I think that the National yeah. would would want would want you to have a dog yeah that seems right I think so as well yeah I think so too yeah yeah, Maybe. I don't want to be on his side. I want I I, I want to be in the middle. Um, but he, I appreciate that. Thank but you. He's doing a good. He's doing a good job. Yeah, it's I a know. good sell. Yeah, the national would want it. I yeah. feel like I'm I mean, being. A, how, how can I say no? I feel like I'm yeah. being a bit Jonah Hill actually here. Um, 
<laughs> a little bit of contemporary <laughs> um, right right listen let's talk about the future the thing with this album title is i it's been um i feel like it's been kind of heralded in with quite a lot of drama uh I, f- I feel like i'm constantly talking to musicians on the podcast about like I-, I long for the day when i don't have to reference the pandemic but this feel the, the from the album title and really what's going on, on this record it feels like what happened two years ago can't be separated from the art that exists within it uh, am I, is that is that fair to say i think it is fair to say yeah the the album in like our story with it and the title of it and everything it isn't about the pandemic right but i think what happened with the isolation of the pandemic like with almost everybody in the world is it made everybody like stop in their tracks and sort of take this like long isolated like stare in the mirror and like re-examination of everything on top of sort of being thrust into you know um like all the difficulties of that time period so it would it was like a catalyst i think for like what was building up in the band and the ways that we were changing as people and that the relationships were changing i i become a father um right before that time and now throughout this time period there, there's like everyone's a lo- most of the band members are going into parenthood it's just this like life you know stage and yeah, it just really forced us to sort of like come together. And we've always been so close. We're such a democratic band and we really are a family. Um, but this moment, yeah, kind of like plunged us deep because we were away from each other for the first time. I mean, Ryan and I literally started playing guitar when we were 13 years old. And that was the longest that Ryan and I hadn't played a concert together since we were like 14 or 15 years old you know um yeah so yeah that was like really a difficult thing and i and i think is is part of what like set the stage for for like everything that we went through and making this record was there ever a moment when you thought it could have gone the other way yeah i think i oh, think definitely the, yeah the, the the like the defining moment of that where there's almost like looking back this arc and this like swing um is this crazy night that we had in 2021 and we played this show at the greek theater in la and that's like our hometown the greek is this incredible venue we've played it before but this was like the first time they opened the greek so nobody had been out we hadn't played a show in like i don't know well over a year nobody had been allowed to do this and it was a sold out show and it was just like it was also my son's first show he it was the first time he got to come see me play it was so emotional and like the whole air was vibrating and so it was just this really incredible night and also um we had started making the record and digging out like um these things within ourselves and it was really unclear that night if we were gonna like be able to move forward as we've known local natives and we never had that type of reckoning before in our in our band you know um so yeah that was like a really wild moment and i think that it kind of started um the swing to the other part of this which is like there's this side of like kind of plunged into depression and isolation that started this album. And then there's kind of like our climb out and the rediscovery of each other and who we are now as people and really meeting each other. And that's something that took like a lot of time. It took therapy and it took, you know, um, us like really opening up and just letting go of preconceived notions of what local natives is. So to be like a little bit more specific, I would just, you know, for people that maybe don't know our process and us as much, there's three singers and songwriters in the band. It's Ryan, Kelsey, and myself. We all bring songs to the table. Local Natives is really democratic. Like, all five of us get a vote in basically all the decisions. So there's just, like, so much negotiating creative, create like, create as creative partners. 
And the dynamic between us, you know, there were just tensions that grow over time. And I think uh, those were just really coming to a point where we had kind of like locked each other in, in silos a little bit too much. And what we wanted was to, to like expand that. And so I'm rambling now, but basically like we, we really worked hard to release that and just like find where we were. And we like somehow or not somehow, like I felt like we could do it the whole time. Wasn't sure, but we really were able to do that and kind of like come back together. So it's quite like, there's a lot in the album that reminds me of, those darker parts and then so much that reminds me of like coming back together and kind of the redemption of like choosing um each other in these relationships i feel like i've talked to a lot of musicians recently who say that the pandemic exposed problems that have been problems that existed in their band for that they weren't even aware of um in how that they communicated but i imagine that if you're in a band with three songwriters and there is that creative negotiation that is almost hardwired into how you exist that actually being able to whilst you might have felt in three different silos being able to communicate with each other wasn't necessarily a problem no i think as you can tell we're a couple of earnest guys and we have to like we've always more than most bands like talked about our like feelings i think like at least when we've met other bands. Um, But yeah, like, you know, I think we were just together constantly so much, always doing things that in a way it just felt like we we were like, just get on with it. You know, you just like, you're just constantly like playing shows or or doing sessions or recording. And and this was like the first time that, yeah, we had to like kind of take a step back. And then like Kelsey was, you know, talking about it and, and some, another interview the other day, but yeah, just like the things started to bubble up and then and then when you weren't together you could kind of make more out of it in your mind and then it snowballed and yeah i think we just had to finally talk through some of like the heavier deeper things that were were going on cat um was there was there a conversation about whether you would be open about that process as part of this record because it's obviously been something you've you've talked about it's in the press release you know you've talked about being on the verge of collapse like did, were you all in agreement that actually talking about that and being open about that with with fans was the way to go or or was that something that you discussed it's funny that you yeah you bring that up because because we definitely weren't all in agreement i mean tay i, I would maybe say was probably the the least uh interested in talking about that but we, yeah, we had a bunch of band band discussions about how to go about talking about it. Um, yeah, it was yeah. sort of like a last minute decision. It was like the week before announcing the album, really, that we had that discussion um, and and what to kind of say in the press release, and then therefore, you know, how open do we want to be about it? And I think like yeah like there there is a fine line like especially because the um like every band i've ever met and once you get to know them um they have like the most insane dynamic yeah <laughs> like, being a band is just shocking. so wild because of what you have to do you have to live together creative partners your livelihoods are tied you know you're married um you know you just want to figure out if you can get a dog like imagine having to negotiate that with just like four other people, you know, Um, like every single thing is just crazy. And then I think ours is just up a notch because of the collaborative multi singer songwriter overall, like democratic vibe of local natives. Um, So yeah, I think it was just a discussion about like how in depth do we want to go in, into that conversation and yeah, I was resistant at first to being totally open to, to parts of it, but I think we all just agreed. Like, I think we landed on the side of just being of, of honesty, basically, like instead yeah. of trying to craft kind of some sort of narrative, it was like, I, I even think that like the pandemic and everything that we'd gone through and, and talking about these things together shifted the way we're kind of approaching a lot of things. Like we're like, 
these music videos and whatever stuff we're posting online is like so goofy, but in a lot of ways feels like more in touch with like who we really are. And I don't know. I think, I think, yeah, at the end of the day, we're like, Oh, let's try just like kind of being like, you know, just upfront and honest about a lot of this stuff. I think that'll just feel, feel better than um, trying to like couch it in some sort of like, you know, PR. Yeah. I think that's, what's really, it been so interesting to me about it is that you've 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 talked a lot about that being how the record was born and, and all of that but you also seem to be having way more fun like the video for NYU is just super fun like and you've even yeah. talked today about how you know playing the new songs is fun that word keeps coming up but mm -hmm. that's not really like what the kind of press angle of the record is it just it <laughs> seems really yeah it is that it's an interesting like other side of the coin because like I think, man, I think it was on Gorilla Manor. It was maybe the first time we got an enemy um, story. And I don't know if we were just like oh, yeah. deep into tour and we were like just being, we were just like kind of out of our minds. But the photos we got for that story, we were just so like kind of like bummed because we were like pouring like pancake batter on ourselves. And, and it's this thing where you're like, you want to be taken seriously like it was our big our first big look over the uk and, and i think they were pushing us on, remember they were pushing yeah. us they were like, welcome to the to the monkey house yeah yeah and they were like trying to push us in this way and you know there was a genuine side to it but i remember that and there was such yeah. an early we were like god like that that did not feel good that felt like well, we, we were had like to, we had to remember of. Well, not even taking advantage of it, because, like, we, you know, we obviously, like, love NME. Like, we were just, like, so psyched to be a part of it. But then we were like, oh, we, like, we, like, uh, I don't know, like, let ourselves, we should have just kind of, like, been more on top of it, I guess. And so from that point on, we were like, all right, no, none of this, like, goofy stuff. Like, you know, even though that's how, as soon as the cameras would stop, we were pretty goofy. But, like, we're like, all right, like we want to be, you know, taken seriously. Like we, you know, we take our music seriously. Like, but I think now it is this thing of like, okay, like we're just being honest. We're being more of ourselves. We're just kind of putting it all out there. Um, and yeah, I think it just takes a long time to kind of get comfortable with that. Maybe. T Taylor, I should just to, uh, just for a little bit of inside baseball. Uh, when yeah. You was, when you were talking about married life, so I, I used to work at the NME and Kat works in music management. And during the course of our relationship, it has been interesting seeing how the two camps think about things. Mm -hmm. So I've definitely been at magazines and gone, I wonder if this band would like dress up as penguins. And yeah. Kat, and Kat, is, Kat is definitely comes from the perspective of, I represent my artists. How can they feel comfortable? How can I make them look cool? There, There is that juxtaposition there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. And it's like, totally. And it's an interesting balance, especially like that was our first time going to the UK. Like we we're new to it all. And you know what? Yeah, like, do I want to dress up as a penguin? Maybe. You know, that could be cool. That could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe not i don't know like so some of it is just a little bit yeah i totally obviously this is our fifth record and and we've seen the loops from each side but it's something i think each artist just kind of has to like figure out as as they go um I, I so yeah that, i love I, that though that you both are like debating think, the one suit idea I think, <laughs> I think the problem sometimes is that when you when when i would be sat at a desk and say Oh, I wonder whether this band would wear suits. I wonder whether they would wear tuxedos. And then it's almost that sort of game of telephone where that would become, after speaking to a manager or a press person or whoever, that would become, oh, I wonder whether they'll dress as penguins. Like, actually, uh -huh. how you <laughs> yeah. envisaged in your head wasn't quite yeah, that, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, think we're, I think we're more or less at time, but Kat, what else have you got? Well, I, I mean, I have to ask you if you're coming over to the UK with this record at any point. We definitely, definitely. will. Yeah, uh, next year, right. for sure. Um, yeah, there's more uh, parenthood emerging in the band. Um, so, so yeah, that's going to be pushed to next year. Exactly. Remind, awesome. me of the, remind me of the release date of the record. 
The record came out uh, seven On seven Friday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, thanks so much for coming on and uh, indulging this kind of marital uh, <laughs> arrangement. Um, last question: Would you say, um, would you say, Taylor, that you said you'd recently become a parent? Would you say that becoming a parent is a little bit like becoming a dog owner? I would say that is would say not that. in my experience. Yeah, <laughs> if you're talking to a different band member, you get a different answer. For me. No, um, not at all. So, Cap, maybe I'm coming to your side. Having a dog <laughs> is a lot of responsibility. And just for me, not as much return. Whereas, like, <laughs> I loved becoming a, um, like a father to a child, like, so, so much. And you experience ego death and you experience, like, ultimate, you know, all this incredible, um, like, emotion and, that's been awesome. So, so no, I, I wouldn't uh, compare those. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but guinea pig. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to know: is there anything that you would want, like barter for, for a dog? Is there anything on your list that could possibly be big enough? Well, I mean, all joking aside, we can't have a dog. Our flat isn't built to have a dog. We we live in this complex in in East London. I mean, that makes it sound like we're in a cult or something. We we live in kind of like <laughs> our cult leader won't allow it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not allowed. No. But you know, it's, ca- it's kind of like a you know gated community kind of vibe. And gotcha. You're not actually no dogs in there. No dogs in there. Every, everyone's got dogs. Well, Everyone got dogs in the pandemic. Yeah, this doesn't seem. Decided. This doesn't seem like it's yeah. tracking. No, yeah, well, basically, what happened? Yeah, is it's like it's it's in the contract when you know when, when we got our place that you're not allowed dogs, and then the pandemic happened, and everyone just went. But we're getting dogs and that's the, right the the place yeah, can, dog right here yeah exactly um yeah. and we we're more responsible than that so we got guinea pigs but and, and nice. i imagine that's how things will stay for some time to come and also you know i'll be honest cat does most of the cleaning out of our guinea pig hutch it's not like i've really put myself <laughs> in a position where i can say i can care for an animal that needs more care and attention you've um, not proven yourself no, but we. Well, I, I wasn't expecting to end this podcast no. feeling <laughs> feeling emasculated. But you know, there you go. <laughs> well, it's a new it's a new phase of just honesty and acceptance, and yeah. I think that it's totally great that um that you're not you know you guys just aren't dog dog people yet. That's fine. Maybe one day. You're guinea yeah. pig. Okay, you guys are guinea yeah. pig people. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You don't hear that every day. Love that. <laughs> I definitely so- didn't think we were going to spend this much of the chat talking about our guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> I love it. I'm well, Kat, when we come to London and play a show, to let me know if, since you are um, love the old stuff, if there's like a song you want or anything like that, definitely let us know and we'll, oh. yeah. we'll uh, put it in oh, the set list in London for you. That's amazing. I love that. Thank you. Cool. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Uh, see you again. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Great to meet you. See you. All right. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Bye.